Hello and welcome to this little tutorial on some of our genealogy resources. Today we're going to be looking at two in particular, Ancestry Library Edition and Heritage Quest. Starting off with Ancestry, as this is the Library Edition, it means you can only access it if you're within the library itself. So you can't log in at home, assuming you are at the library, the first thing you want to do is actually to go to our website, calivalibrary.org, and go to research it, online resources, and click on the genealogy uh, tab here. And this is where all of our genealogy resources are. And here at the very top is Ancestry Library Edition. So go ahead and click on that. So for those of you who have worked with Ancestry.com before, uh, you may notice some differences between Ancestry Library Edition and Ancestry.com. Uh, Ancestry.com is a more personalized subscription where it will have like the family tree and collaboration tools, etc. Whereas the Library Edition was made more for institutions and thus is more geared towards like general research. You can still find a lot of great information though um, on the Library Edition. So once you get to the main page here, you'll be presented with different databases to search. Um, including like the census, military records, immigration records. If you want to search everything though, you can just click search up here or begin searching down here. And I'm going to go with all categories. Uh, your search then can be as simple as putting in a last name. So for instance, I'm going to put in my last name. And as you can see, I get quite a few hits. And if you want to sort of like narrow down your search or results that pop up, you can just add more specifics. Uh, for instance, if you're like 100% sure that you got this name spelled correctly rather than, you know, with the I here, you can go and slide this bar from exact sounds like and similar all the way up to exact. So it'll only pop up with things that are exactly spelt this way. Um, let's see. You can also add other details, like you can put in first names. So I'm going to actually do my uh, grandfather here, and you can put like um, where he might have lived. I know he lives in lived in Wisconsin, so you can add that. And you can get as specific or as general as you want. It depends on how much information you have and how many hits you want to uh, bring up. So for instance, I could put mail, and I could do search, and it'll think about it here for a second. There you go. So I went from like 300,000 all the way down to uh, 279 here. From here, you can click on documents that you want to view and it'll show you sort of the general information on the, the document. So you can see all that general information here. Uh, if you want to keep this information, you can uh, print it here. So there's a lovely print button up here, or you can email it to yourself by hitting send document. You can also click the image here where the original document is, and it'll pop up with a, a picture of it. And what's nice with Ancestry is it'll actually highlight where your name that you're searching is. So here's Leroy. And it also will highlight the, the family members that go along with the person that you're searching, assuming that you're like looking at the census or some other document that has family members attached to that name that you're searching. And like with the overview before, you can send this page to yourself, um, send the image home through your email. You can also save it to your computer, uh, but since this is a library version of Ancestry, it only works at the library, so you'd end up saving it on our computers, which won't help you at all very much. Uh, to go back to the original document, you just hit that back arrow up here in the top left-hand corner, and it'll eventually go back to that overview page, or rather, it looks like it goes all the way back to our, our searches. So you can like click back into where you're looking, or you can go look at a different document. So those are the basics of searching, viewing, and saving documents on Ancestry. There are some other resources you can explore if you'd like, such as Learning Center, uh, which has some tips or uh, the charts and forms up here, which has like papers that you can print and fill out as you're conducting your research. Now going back to the library website, 
we're going to take a look at Heritage Quest next. Uh, this resource can be accessed at home, which is nice, and I believe it's also powered by Ancestry, so uh, you're going to see a lot of similar documents and layouts when you open this up. So once it loads, you can see, for instance, yeah, you can see it says Ancestry up here, so I'm pretty sure it's powered by Ancestry, but it has its own documents. Um, but it shares a lot of things too, like the research aids, you would have noticed that in the Learning Center from Ancestry. Now the main difference between Heritage Quest and Ancestry Library Edition is how the two companies scanned their documents. Heritage went with a bitonal scan, meaning everything is in black and white, whereas Ancestry went with grayscale. So if you're having trouble reading documents on one source, you might try the other to see if the scan is easier to read. Another interesting feature you can find here on Heritage is the maps. Now what's fun is about the map is you can look at how the counties of each state changed over time. Uh, for instance, if I were to look at Tennessee here, you can see the black lines are where the county lines are during this time period, which is 1790 at the moment, uh, whereas the white lines are where the county lines are in present day. So you can actually skip between the different time periods to see how the county lines change. And this can be helpful if you're trying to narrow down your search for somebody and you are certain that the person you're looking for was born in X county. Uh, you might try looking here to see if the said county was called something else during the time it was born, or they were born rather. Uh, so you can see here like uh, Tipton County covers both, looks like a uh, Lauderdale and Tipton during the 1830s. So if somebody you're looking for, you're, you're fairly certain was born in Lauderdale, um, but you can't find them, you might come here and see like, ah, oh, in 1830, Lauderdale didn't exist yet. It was Tipton then. So something to that extent. In any case, going back to our, our search, as far as I can tell, there's no way to search everything all at once in Heritage like I did in Ancestry. Uh, this could be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to search the census logs here. And you can see that Heritage has all the filters laid out, whereas Ancestry had, Ancestry had it more compact. I personally like this format better, so I can see everything all at once, but you might feel otherwise. Uh, you go through the process much like you did with Ancestry, where you put in all the information that you have, or as little information as you have. And let's see. I'm just going to do mail and Wisconsin. Wonderful. And then you go down to the bottom here to hit search. So you can see the layout is basically exactly the same as Ancestry. And if you were to click in, you can send documents like you would in Ancestry. So there's the overview worth the sending and the actual document that you can send to yourself. So those are the basics for both Ancestry Library Edition and Heritage Quest. Of course, there is more to explore in both programs if you want to do more advanced searches or learn more about the details of some of the documents. So I invite all of you to investigate your histories using these wonderful resources. And if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to give us a call at the library at 901-457-2601. Uh, thank you for joining me and happy hunting. For those of you who may have missed the secret word during the video, the secret word or code is family tree.